Nancy and I recently had the opportunity to see an international conservation program during our visit to the Caribbean island of Dominica. We've come here to see the largest of the sea turtles, the leatherback, known locally here as the cowwine. These giants have been known to reach over nine feet in length and weigh in at over 2,000 pounds. The Rosalie Sea Turtle Project, part of the larger Widecast Sea Turtle Conservation Network, is making remarkable strides in leatherback conservation in the Caribbean. Rowan Byrne, the project leader in Dominica, has tirelessly spent the past four years tagging leatherbacks and training Dominicans to patrol the Atlantic beaches. Hi, and you head up the Rosti project here in Dominica in partnership with the Ministry of Agriculture. Tell us a little bit about what you're trying to do for leatherback sea turtles in particular here. Certainly. Um Pat, the, the, the Rossi project is a community-based conservation research project uh, which is part affiliated to Widecast from Duke University. It works uh, in partnership with the network of Widecast around the Caribbean basin to preserve endangered sea turtles that nest on the shores of Dominica, particularly the critically endangered leatherback and critically endangered hawksbill. Dominica has three nesting sea turtles here and we, we basically work with the community at local stakeholder level and national stakeholder level to protect Dominica's sea turtles. So what impressed me most when I saw this last year when I was here was that you, you have, these are Dominicans wandering up and down all these beaches. Correct. And you know in the morning how many sea turtles have been on what beaches all across this Atlantic <laughs> coast now of Dominica. This is Pretty true. much. Yeah, absolutely, Pretty, absolutely. Uh, that's phenomenal. And your project works to bring Dominican people also in contact with some turtles to the develop a, a personal relationship. Absolutely. The key issue here for me uh, as the biologist researching these turtles is to get stakeholders involved, get Dominicans involved. It doesn't need for this Irishman to be here forever. It's Dominican projects, it's Dominican soil. Dominicans need to see what I see. I'm so lucky to see this great stuff. I just want people to see what I see because sitting on a beach beside a giant leatherback that's traveled thousands of kilometers, you know, pulled her 800,000 pound bull up the, up the beach to nest and see her there for two hours and share a private experience with her is, is mind-blowing. I want everybody to see this. So the key role is to call everybody, get everybody down, get them excited about it, let them know about the turtle, explain what the turtle's doing before it get carried away, everything that goes with it, and just let them experience the whole thing. And then they can make a decision themselves about how they want to treat this resource. Beautiful. Well, let's keep our fingers crossed that after that rainstorm. <laughs> well, the best thing is to do, we should probably turn off those lights so the turtles don't, don't right. uh, evade nesting tonight so we can, we, can, we can head on up the beach and see if we find some more. Great. Let's do it. All right. Thanks. Rowan's Dominican collaborators will collect the eggs and transport them to a protected location where they will have safe passage to the ocean. If you look at this here, this is basically what they call the pineal gland. Uh, this, is the, this is how she tells the difference between night and day. Okay. Obviously, the first thing that comes out, good girl, it's all right. The first thing that comes out of, uh, that comes out of the water is her head. So this is handy to have it on the top of the head to obviously tell the difference between night and day. Um, it's also, it, it helps with hormonal changes as well. It's her hormonal gland as well. Now, right here, I don't know if you can see, you guys can see it. She has a thing, she has a, a W-shaped mouth. They're like this, it's basically like that. And what it is, is it's, it's, they call these lateral cusps. And this is basically how she pops the jellyfish. So she sticks her head out of the water and she pops the bell of the jellyfish like a Portuguese man of war. And then she swallows it down. So the eye is very sensitive, but I want to show you this. It's all right, girl, thanks. You're all right. Um, so if you can see this here, you see this slime? And this is basically pure salt, for want of a better expression, in mucosa. These are, she has salt glands behind the eyes right here. And when she's up on the surface, when she's up here on the beach, she excretes the excess salt, basically through the gland behind the eye. So these are called turtle tears. You're all right, girl. You're all right. See her? See her jaws? Um, and um, so what we're actually observing here, she's in actual labor. And uh, this is basically one way of her... There's a fly on her. This is one way of her... Um, cool, uh, cooling herself off. You'll, you'll also find, good girl, you'll also find, you see the reddish color in her skin? Yeah. Right, this is her way of cooling herself off. Leatherbacks have a, a counter, a count, she's a character, counter current heat exchange system. Basically means they can um, uh, flush heat to the surf skin surface in order to make them cool themselves off. So that's why she's pink. And what she's doing is she's laying the eggs. You can see the eggs in the bag there. And they'll take about two months before they'll make little turtles. 
The cool thing about those is it's the temperature of the sand that dictates the sex of the egg. So those eggs at the moment are genderless. They don't have a male or female um, sex. What, I, what you need to see is that these seven ridges here, this turtle has obviously done a few nests this year because you have ridges basically that are, are very pronounced. When these turtles swim from Canada, from Africa, from, from uh, England, from uh, the Carolinas, down to the Caribbean to lay their eggs, they store all the fat in their shell. And what happens is when they get fat, the shell becomes more rounded. And this turtle has obviously used up a lot of her resources. There's still more in her because the shell is so pronounced. You see the way the ridges are sharp? And that's basically one of the reasons why her shell is like that. You, when she's finished doing this, when she's, she's out covering her nest, what she's gonna do is she'll come pack the sand in. In amongst the bag there, the small eggs, but they're not all turtle eggs. The main turtle the eggs are the big ones. They're about this big. And in between them is smaller, teeny weeny little eggs. And what they do is really cool. Over the next two months, those eggs, the little ones, even though there's nothing inside them, they release air into the nest to help the little hatchlings breed. And what they do is because she's compacting down the sand, she compacts the eggs in and these little eggs create spaces in the nest. So if it's the first time you've seen a leatherback, raise your hand. Alive. That's pretty cool, is it not? That's pretty good. And okay, next question. Hands up who wants to see it again? All the time. Okay, okay. Well, the choice is yours. You can see these turtles as often as they nest and keep them safe. The decision is yours.